In this demo, I'll show you how to create banners and charts for your Illustrator documents. So what for to create a banner, what you want to do is you want to start off with a nice large rectangle. And then you want to give that rectangle a stroke or an outline. And you want to make it thick enough so they can actually see it. So I'm going to make this there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pointer tool, hold down my Alt key, and I'm going to drag down and make a copy of that. And I'm going to make it smaller. So that's going to be my dovetail that goes in behind. And then I use my pen tool and you have to make sure you're on the add anchor point tool. And you're going to go to the middle and it'll give you a little fly out if it tells you you're on the middle. So I'm going to click on there and then I go back to my white pointer tool. Then I can drag that anchor and pull it in towards the center here. And again, it gives me a little tool to tell me I'm lined up. So that's pretty good on that end, but I don't want that in front. I want it behind. So I go object, arrange, send to back. So now it's in behind. So that's looking pretty good already. Um, but I do want to give it that idea that it's sort of a 3D image. So I need to make a line that goes in here. So I'm going to take my line tool and I'm just going to draw a freehand a line that connects these two spots. And look at that. I have a banner. Now, um, to repeat that on the other side, the easiest way would be just to collect that and hold down your Alt key and drag it over because that's what you need. Oops, Control Z, my Alt key and drag it over. There we go. And then you can go Object, Transform, and Flip, Reflect. And I'm going to go click on Reflect and I want to reflect it vertical. So I've got it on the other side and I move it into this location. And voila, it's got to be on the back as well. Object arranged, sent to back. And I can nudge it over just a little bit so it lines properly. And I'm ready with a banner, which I now can add some text to or whatever else. And a good idea would be just to right click on select everything and group it together. Now you can scale your banner and play with it and have it to use. And you know, even if you want to change colors on it, same thing, you can you can select it and uh, and whatever. Okay, so that's your banners. Now, for charts, we actually have a built-in chart tool. So if we look down here, there is a chart tool right here. And it depends on what kind of chart you've created last, that it gives you the little dialog box. So we're going to start with a pie graph. So I'm going to start on the pie graph tool. And I'm just going to drag open on the screen how big I want the graph to be. So it's going to pop in here. And now this isn't much of a graph. It's only got one value in here. Now you can either enter your headings and your values, or you can do like me. And I've, I've created a little text file before. I called it data. So I have somewhere in here. It's got to be a text file. So you can import data. So I've got dog, cat, mice, birds, and some values in here. And I click on the check mark, and it will create a a box for me. Now I'll close that and I've got a pie chart ready to go. Now if I double click on that I could go and change the values and it will update this for me but I'm actually okay with this but I want to customize it so I want to add some colors. So I'm going to go to my pointer tool and if I click on it it's all one object so I'm going to right click and I'm going to ungroup that. So I'm going to select that go object and I'm going to go ungroup and once I do that, it gives me a warning that once you do this, you cannot add it, the graph style, its data or anything else. So I'm saying, yes, I'm okay with that. Now, it's still all one object um, with the different colors. So with our, our labels are separate now by the first ungroup. And that's good, but still not what I need to do. So I'm going to ungroup it one more time. When I click on ungroup, this time it shows up in the dialog box. So now if I select the one black, it's actually grouped together with the color that it's there. And that's handy for giving it individual colors because now I can choose each piece separately and it will be grouped with its label and I can give it a color and it automatically links that in into the colors. So that's how you can get individual colors for your pie chart. Now, if you wanted to turn that pie chart into a donut chart, meaning you want to take out a piece in the center, you would have to take your circle tool ellipse tool, make a circle, hold on your shift key as you drag open your circle so that you get a solid piece. And then I'm going to take that, pick it up by the middle, and I'm going to line it up. And it tells me intersect, and it tells me that that's the right location. So that's good. Now I want to go object path, 
and I want to say divide objects below. So I'm going to click on that. So now you've got a separate circle in here. Now it would be easy if you could just hit delete, but because these things are still grouped, you're going to have to, for each one of these, you're going to have to ungroup it. Then you can select the centerpiece and you can delete it. So I'm going to do that for each one of them. Go ungroup for each color, ungroup and ungroup. Okay, so now I should be able to take that centerpiece, but it's still grouped this way. So I'm going to have to right-click and ungroup that. Now I can go in and take that. So it's a little few steps of ungrouping involved, but it's not that not bad if you know which sequence to do it in. So I'm going to ungroup these, and I've taken out my center. So now I have one of those nice modern-looking pie charts. Now it's no longer linked with our details so if you change one color here you would also have to change here but that will give us a nice donut chart so now you know how to make a pie chart a donut chart and how to change colors now the last thing is i'm going to show you how to make a unique bar graph so i'm going to go back to my graph tool and i'm going to go to my column graph tool and this time i'm going to drag open the columns and same thing i'm going to import that same data again just because i don't want to have to type it out so i'm going to import that again and say OK and bring my data in. So I have this data. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to close that data. And uh, now I need a custom design. So you might not have noticed this pencil up here. So I'm going to select that pencil. That was an image that I've live traced and taken out the background. So I have this little image and I can go object graph and I can say design actually. Yep. Design. And it gives me this thing here and I can say I want to create a new design and I'm going to call it, I'm going to rename it, I'm going to call it pencil and say OK. So now I have this preview and I say OK. Now I can go to my bar graph, select that graph and I go object, graph and I can go into column. And now I can say I want these columns to be made out of pencils. Now, if I'd say vertically scaled, that will stretch my pencil into all kinds of weird shapes, which I don't want. So I want it to be repeating. But when I say re repeating, I also have to say how much, how many units in here this one pencil will create. So seeing that I'm pretty low in here, um, if I say five, I might get a fractional pencil. So let's try what I say here. And I say five units and I say, okay. So now I get this very strange graph. So that's not terribly useful. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go object. I, I'm going to go graph and I'm going to go columns and I'm going to use pencil and I'm going to use repeating and I'm going to uh, not rotate the legend design. We don't want that. And we're going to say units. We're going to make it one. And for fraction scale design, say OK and go in there. And that looks a whole lot better. So now I've got pencils to make all my stacks. Now, if I wanted to do just one of them, I believe I can just select, I can ungroup this. If you wanted to do just one graph at a time, as soon as you try to ungroup that, I think you would have a problem because it won't work anymore. So another way of using that image would be um, sort of to cheat, I guess. So what you can do is you take your image and I'm going to round that out and I'm going to just stretch it. So I'm going to rotate it for the height that I need and I'm going to put my pencil here and I'm going to stretch it into the height that I need for this one. And now if I can uh, move that to the back, object arrange, sent to back, I can see how tall it would be. Then I could take my pencil here, hold on my alt key, make a copy of it here. And I could scale that down and make that a different image or use the pencil, make it smaller and so on and create my bar graph heights based on the pencil. Um, and then you just play around with it. But then you're not using the, the built in design tool anymore. You're just using the actual images to put on top of your graph or in the end ungroup your graph so object ungroup and it'll give us our warning again and so now I can ungroup this again um, here I can ungroup this again and I could get rid of that particular one to say okay that's going to be represented by my pencil and I can then create that manually and play around with it but I have my scale and I have my my uh, X and Y bars and all that kind of stuff 
preset for me so that I can actually use that in as part of my legend and so on. So you can customize your design after the fact. Have fun creating bar graphs.